Our next speaker is Jere Sanisalo, lead program of Housemark, and he will be talking about the, about the modern GBU particle systems used in alienation. Welcome, Jere. Yes. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Are we excited about particles now? Uh, yes. So. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about is basically particle systems and uh, how we basically reinvented our in-house particle technology uh, and like kind of like where we came from, where we're going and w what we did basically. So I'm going to start with uh, some definitions that what I mean about particle systems, what, what are we talking about. And then a little brief, a brief talk about history, basically where we as a company came from, our previous game, Superstars to HD, Dead Nation, Resogun. And then go, go, going over the new system, it's, it's probably going to be a bit technical, but hopefully there are some interesting anecdotes and stuff there. And then some use cases, like kind of like interesting things that we were able to do with the new, new technology that previously wasn't, wasn't possible. So, uh, talking about particle systems, uh, and I, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm sorry about the text, it can be a bit hard, hard to read, but I want to have funny pictures on the backgrounds, so you can focus on that if, if, if the monotony of my voice is, is making you tired. So, particle systems, basically, uh, what I mean uh, with particle systems is, is, is basically a system or an engine that creates, updates, and draws all of the particles. And a particle is basically something, anything, uh, that is usually quite small, but there are uh, many of them. So, hundreds to hundreds of thousands of small pieces uh, that we basically name particles. Uh, they can be rendered in many ways, they can be billboards, they can be uh, stretched particles, they can be, well, they can be rendered in, in, in many ways, ways. That, that's the thing. I, I, I think quite most often they're, they're billboards or sprites or something like this. And quite often particle systems are used to create all sorts of special effects, like explosions, smoke trails, rain, uh, so debris, stuff like that. Okay, so our old particle system, so this is like the Super Status HD detonation Resogun era, uh, uh, like a few years ago. Basically, half of alienation was also done with this, but then we threw everything out and, and used the new system. So our old system was basically one of these traditional particle systems, which means it's a fixed function pipeline. So there's a fixed uh, structure, for a particle, so it has a position, velocity, a lifetime, something like that, and there are fixed amount of things it can do. It can move, it can uh, like uh, have some sort of uh, velocity, some sort of uh, predefined spawn batter patterns that you can basically uh, uh, tweak with curves and, and initial values. It's really limited, basically, in, uh, in expressiveness, what it can do. Uh, and, and, and also, uh, everything was done on, on the CPU. Uh, on on PS, P, PS3, we used the SPUs, but it's still if, if effectively it's CPU effect. So everything is updated, created, updated, and the rendering data is created on the CPU. And, and this basically limits quite a lot of, of the performance part, but it being a fixed, fixed function pipeline, it, it also also severely limited what we could do. And we basically pulled everything uh, out of that system as we could in uh, Stardust, Dead Nation, and Resogun. But during the development of Resogun, uh, Resogun was uh, our launch title for the PS4. Uh, it used mostly the old system, but we really wanted to somehow like come out and show some really spectacular effects so that was the start of the new system, basically. So uh, we, we, we couldn't, like for example, at the end, uh, uh, end of Resogun, the whole level explodes into these really tiny cubes. And uh, the CPU updates for that, because there are like hundreds of thousands of cubes, it's, uh, it just wouldn't cut it. 
So uh, all of these were basically handmade with computers and, 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 and with GPUs. And that was also the point where it was really clear that the GPU is, is, is super powerful and really well fit for updating particles because each particle is uh, uh, usually like separate from each other. So it's one of these embarrassingly parallel problems. Uh, so Resogun was handwritten shaders, really slow to create, lots of work setting them up, all sorts of problems with them and buffer allocations and all of that jazz. But it, in the end it worked and, uh, and, and it uh, helped us bring Resogun out like as, a, as an interesting and uh, interesting looking game. So, when doing Alien Nation, we started to think that, okay, we really need to, like, somehow now have a proper new system because the old one was many, many years old. So uh, we, we basically uh, uh, thought about the assumptions, like, where do we want the engine to run? What do we want it to do? So we decided early on that we we're going to target modern computers, and this means DX11 uh, or better. PS4 and um, all, all of that capability of hardware. And we wanted it to scale. So we wanted to have, if we want, uh, uh, in, in some cases, if we really wanted to, we wanted an engine that could, could pull off millions of particles, but also we wanted uh, an engine that could, could pull off uh, less, but more interesting looking particles. And, uh, and we also wanted like a total control on what the particles actually do in the, in, in the system. So, uh, and that's what the side channel data here means. So, for example, screen space collisions is, is one, example, uh, one example, but I, I'm going to be talking about other things for uh, this side channel data. And, and it could be basically anything that you can have in, a, uh, in GPU. Like, if you can have anything in GPU buffer, that a compute sh shader can read, we can plug that in and, and, and use it on a game, by ga game uh, basis. And the most important thing of, of this system is basically you only pay for what you use. And this is like the underlining thing upon which everything was build, built. So if you want to have millions of particles, uh, that means that they have to be really lightweight, uh, uh, but it's possible. But also, the system allows for these more complex things like screen space collisions and particles with tons of different attributes and, and so on. Uh, and those are, of course, more heavy. But what we wanted was that if you're not using it, you're not paying for it. And uh, this will hopefully become more evident as well as we continue. Okay, so the new system, what we did, is completely on the GPU, meaning all of the spawning updating and rendering of the particles uh, resides in compute buffers, basically. Uh, and uh, th there's a tiny bit on CPU, because, of course, the game gameplay runs on, on CPU. Something has to spawn something. But th that has been kept to an absolute minimum. And mostly the whole system uh, revolves around compute shaders. So compute shaders do all of the spawning, updating, uh, rendering is, is, of course, pixel and vertex shaders, but it, it, it reads the same data. And many of these uh, other systems that use GPU particles you know, from other companies that I've seen so far, uh, they seem to be doing the spawning actually on the CPU side, which is kind of like the interesting point where we, we kind of deviated. And this, is, this will hopefully become really evident soon why this is, I, I feel this is a better way. So, so the new, new system is basically only a list of effects that can be put into folders for uh, clarity's sake. Everything is an effect. There are no different types of effect. So there's only one type of effect that does everything. And uh, on, on basically on the uh, C++ or API side, every effect is a buffer of data. So the, uh, the, there's basically the particles as they are now, and the particles uh, that will be written for the next frame. So that's, uh, that's basically what it is from the system point of view. But from the uh, definition point of view, it's basically arbitrary shader code. And I'm going to uh, come into this later, but uh, b basically you create the update function. You write code in our particle system. And 
because you, you, you can write any code that can run on computers. You can actually do what, uh, like uh, almost any type of behavior as, uh, as you want, as heavy or as light. You can write to buffers, you can read from them, you can do whatever. So the big thing that I always like to say is that our system doesn't actually have any emitters. So, so when I talked about like spawning and uh, stuff like that, I was kind of stretching the truth a tiny bit because there are no specific emitters. As I just said, there's the update function. So the update function basically needs to decide what it does. So many traditional uh, systems basically contain emitters that emit particles that live and then their particles die. In our system, everything is an emitter. So everything is a particle and every, every particle is an emitter. And uh, the way it works is basically that uh, the lifetime of a particle is always one frame. So if you want a particle to stay alive, it actually has to emit itself for the next frame. And uh, this basically fits the GPU really well, because you have the buffer that you're reading the particles from, and the buffer where you're writing them, and then you flip on, on, on the frame. So uh, that fits the GPU well, but th that also uh, fits really well, because you can also spawn into other particles bu uh, particle buffers as well. So you can ch uh, daisy chain all of these effects. So you can have an interesting effect that when it dies or detects some condition, it, 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 it hits some specific screen space collision point or something. Uh, you can detect that and spawn a different effect from that. And of course, you can still uh, like kind of pretend that something is an emitter and so on. And quite often, we've seen that in practice happen. But there's nothing restricting that. And Yes, I think that was all, all of this. Thanks. So a little bit of how an effect is, is defined in, in a system like this. So there are generic attributes like buffer size, which is the uh, amount of particles, the type of, of, of that thing. I'm going to uh, explain that a little bit. And rendering information, does the particle render or not? Uh, and uh, that's like one of the big things. Uh, then there's references to other effects. So if a particle wants to spawn another particle effect, it has to reference it. And, uh, and that basically pulls all of that uh, thing uh, from the, uh, well, all, all of the definitions of that other particle into that particle, so you can actually spawn them. Uh, then a list of, of, of the particle structure fields. As I said, in the fixed engine, we had like position, velocity, lifetime, for example. In, in, in this new system, you basically decide which fields you have. If you don't want to have any fields, that's fine as well. Uh, you can choose the types of them. Uh, you, you can choose the amount and so on. So, so that basically allows you to create whatever type of particle you want. And then an interesting thing uh, is this uh, thing we call a feature. So uh, a feature is something that has a non-zero cost, but it adds something interesting. So as I said, you only pay for what you use. So if you want to use randomness, you add a, ran a random feature. That pulls all of the uh, random shader functions into the code, but it also adds a tiny bit of initialization code to the start automatically for you. Uh, and that costs a tiny bit, but you only could pay that if you want to use randomness. Same thing with screen space collisions. Uh, we need to bind the buffers, if, uh, the screen buffers, if you want to use them. But all of the effects that don't use them, it's zero cost. Um, now, getting, uh, uh, and then there's also curves. You can do curves, and it generates shader code that actually contains how the curve goes. So there's no curve data. It's all sh sh shader code. And then the biggest thing is the update function, basically. It's, it's pure HLSL code. Uh, and all, uh, all of these features and other things are actually wrapped under, under functions. So you don't have to uh, like think about buffer bindings or stuff like that. Uh, and now, now, now I'm going to get uh, uh, briefly back into the type of, of particles. So basically, there are three types. There's GPU particles. CPU particles and tracked CPU particles. Now, what this type means is, is, is it's basically where does 
the original particle come from. So GPU particle basically means that another GPU effect will spawn that particle and, and it will keep on then doing its thing. Uh, no CPU, uh, like gameplay code, cannot spawn those. So, so the only things the CPU can spawn are CPU particles or tracked CPU particles. These are run on the GPU uh, just as the other things, but the source is from uh, on the CPU. So, so this basically the CPU things are one-offs. So when you spawn them, they live for one frame and that's it. The tracked thing is a little bit more complex. It basically stays alive and internally there's like this ID field that uh, basically allows all of the particles that system uh, spawns to keep track of, of that parent. So that way you can actually have these emitters that move on the, in the world and all the particles can be, for example, attached to it so that they're not living in the world but they could be, for example, attached to that emitter. Uh, that's, uh, I don't have a lot of material on that, but that's basically uh, the biggest feature that allows like super complex control from the gameplay side into the system itself. And, and also uh, a point, all of the particles actually live in, in one buffer. So in, in some other systems, uh, basically, uh, you, you, you sometimes think that a system is one effect. In our, uh, our thing, the effect is basically a buffer of data. It contains all of the particles from all of the effects. So they're all run uh, on the GPU in a single pass. So this is basically what the editor looks like. It's not the prettiest thing, I think, and, and also not the most artist-friendly, but it's powerful as ever. So uh, on, on, on the top, you, uh, you can see, see, see the basic things like uh, buffer size, uh, the type, uh, and uh, if there's rendering, is it sorted or not. And, and all of this basically controls how the shaders are generated. So, so the whole system is basically this really huge uh, system for shader generation so that you can only focus on the update function and you don't have to think about buffer bindings and how to generate uh, indirect arcs buffers and stuff like that. All of that is generated automatically. So th uh, then from the top you have the references to the other particles, the features, there's nothing selected here. This is an empty effect. Uh, curves, if you, if you would have any. And uh, here there are like uh, uh, four, three fields. So one position field, that is a uh, three, 3D vector a life and lifetime. And then on the bottom, there, there's the code. And that code is basically uh, doing uh, the thing that the particle does. Yeah, so uh, as I said, the system is basically a huge shader generator, but it also generates uh, like the update orders and all of the details, basically. It, it abstracts all of them out. So uh, if you create like a new feature to the system, you don't have to think about like, uh, uh, well, when creating the feature, you, you define the buffers that you, you need to be bound. But when you're using that feature, you just use functions like uh, that wrap everything up. And that tends to keep the code quite clean and, and all, all, also quite flexible. And uh, yeah. So some use cases. Uh, in, uh, in alienation, basically. Uh, this is being used in our other projects that we're working on now, but I cannot sadly talk about those that much yet. But in alienation, uh, here are just some examples what we had. So, for example, wind, di uh, wind direction was exposed to the particle system as, as basically a field. Uh, and that allowed to have effects that basically spawn the, uh, like debris and a leaf and stuff like th these particles on the edge of the screen uh, uh, based on the direction of the wind so that it always flows from outside the camera from that angle. And uh, sounds simple, but in some other systems that might be quite hard to do actually. And another interesting, interesting p thing that we had is, uh, and, and this is my favorite feature basically, is screen space emission. So as I said, a particle can do whatever it wants. So we have some uh, uh, bunny quote particles that instead of actually 
uh, being in the world, they basically sample the screen randomly. And like, let's say, a thousand points. And if there's a specific material and some conditions like edge or something, it can spawn particles there. And for example, we use that, uh, like th this image in the background, I, I think is a bit relevant. So, so, so for snow, snows and things that ba basically when you have snow on a cliff, the snow falls, falls from that and, and, and continues. And all of this basically happens automatically with, with random sampling. And then another use case is, is that in, in New Game Plus mode, we, need, we, we needed some changes that, that the world would visually change. This was quite late in the project, I'm, uh, I believe, so uh, we didn't have a lot of time to tweak or create new assets or, or do things like that. Time, is con time constraints and getting it done. So, uh, uh, so in the end, there was this pure particle solution to this. So uh, there were, were these meteor-like pods that fall. These are particles, and uh, they used to screen space collisions to detect impacts. And on, on impact, they spawned this thing called a Zeno tree. I think, if, if I'm not wrong, that yellow thing should be a Zeno tree. And, and the way that is done is, is basically that uh, follows a curl noise. Uh, so it has a bunch of these particles that uh, are spawned, and all of them follow a curl noise based on a single seed. But then as time uh, progresses, they have a secondary seed that is basically just interpolated in, and, and, and that basically makes the particles stay in contact and then start to, start to deviate and, and uh, uh, form these interesting uh, looking effects. So this is like a good example that when you have a full control over w w what's happening, you can do these really interesting things. Like, uh, as far as ideas go, that sounds really simple, but, uh, and it was quite simple to do in our engine, but in, in other particle systems I've tried, that would be a no-go, basically. And then some other use cases. Uh, we, we, we have a fluid simulation in alienation. It's a 3D uh, grid, basically, a volume. Uh, but it's quite coarse. I, I don't remember the exact size, but it's, uh, they, they, they're quite big the cubes in, in that simulation. It doesn't take a lot of time because it is coarse, but uh, visualizing that directly is, uh, doesn't actually look that uh, good because it flows through the walls and, uh, well, it, it, it looks like, well, really low res fog. So particles to the rescue again. So the fluid buffers are exposed as a feature to the system. So all of, all of the particles can now either spawn or follow or do whatever they want with that flu 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 fluid uh, density and velocity fields. And uh, screen space collisions are used here so that you can have this interesting, like, like that the particles don't actually go through the walls and, and things like that. And OK. I'm. Getting quite end into the, uh, my slides, I have some videos, so don't rush out yet. So uh, I, I, I sometimes like to joke that this is the worst of the best particle systems that I've seen. It's super powerful. You have total control. Uh, it runs on the GPU. It's really fast. On PS4, we are actually running it on a, 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 a async compute. So it, uh, it slots really neatly to all of the rendering tasks. and. And, and so on, but it's really, really intimidating to artists. There, there aren't many artists that go like, okay, I want to create an effect, where's my notepad? So, uh, luckily, we had this really awesome guy called Risto Jankila, uh, one of our uh, technical artists, and he basically did, I think, almost all or most of these effects himself, and, uh, well, he's now our go-to particle guy, basically. So job security. Uh, uh, there are alternate sol uh, alternative uh, solutions. One is the fixed function. I, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone anymore. Uh, another uh, way to basically make this better would be a node graph based solution. Basically, what I think Unreal Engine 4 might be going for in the new, is it called Niagara or something? Uh, but that has been on hold for a long time, and last I looked at it, they still had the separation between emitters 
and particles. And I kind of feel that they're losing a little bit of the expressiveness that could be gained if there were no difference between emitters and particles. And then some, and I hope I'm not, uh, well, sucker punching, sucker punch here. Uh, basically, infamous Second Son, the PS4 game, uh, th there is basically this really good uh, talk about this. You can find the PDFs in, in the interwebs. So uh, I think they had kind of like this semi-fixed pipe in a sense, but, uh, but they had totally free expressions. So this means that you had kind of like these fields where you can write arbitrary code like sign, call sign, call functions and do, do things like that. Uh, the, the, their uh, spawning was actually on the CPU side uh, uh, as well. But uh, they, they managed to pull some really impressive looking effects actually uh, fr from that. And of course the good thing is that because time is infinite, all of this could be fitted easily on top of our current system. It, it, it's, it's just basically editor work, something that generates the update function and all of that definitions. It could be fitted on top, but we just haven't had the time. Got games to do and, and, and things like that. All right, now some, because videos are interesting, let's see if I uh, forget everything that is in, in, in these videos. So here are some examples of of some effects and, and uh, something. If it's running badly, uh, I apologize. It, it, it's my laptop. These videos are with r ridiculously high bitrate. Uh, but, uh, and, and some of these might not actually look like the final released game uh, because some of these are from debug cameras and, and basically dur uh, taken during development. I, I, I basically just pestered Risto and asked, like, what material do you have? And he dumped everything from, uh, to me. And now I'm showing you the select pieces he here, basically. So uh, in, in this video, you could see, like, those yellow things grow, those Xeno tree type things. There are some particles floating in the air and, and so on. And this is a test for, for uh, the fluid simulation and, and the, and the, and the curl, curl noise pattern, basically. I, I actually haven't seen this effect in the game in a long, long time, so this is most likely some really, really old stuff. Uh, but uh, it's, it's interesting because you can see like when, when the player is, is, is shooting, uh, the velocities of the uh, fluid field are affected, and with explosions as well, and the particles follow the velocities, so that's why the particles basically do this interesting interesting looking movement there. And, and I think there might be some added curl noise just to make it visually more interesting as well. I don't think we actually shipped any of this uh, specific effect in the game. Um, I'm not sure, but like, uh, yeah. And uh, this, uh, now this video is basically trash emitting basically from the wind, wind direction. So this is one of the use cases I explained earlier. So, so, so you can see the uh, uh, trash basically being emitted from the lower right corner. And uh, you, you could in the game change, of course, the uh, direction and it would follow. Now this one, I hope you can see something. I really wanted to show this, but this is a really, really dark video. So uh, on the ground, there's supposed to be uh, these, uh, well, they're not tentacles, but growth. Uh, things that basically follow uh, this curl noise thing, they basically flow through uh, forwards uh, and have screen space coll collisions so that they stay on top of the ground. And I, I'm not sure this actually shipped in the game, but I just think it's a really interesting effect that you can do. It can branch uh, based on some probability and, and so on. Now this is uh, this. Now this current one has kind of been covered already, but this is just a smoke that is reacting to all of the uh, fluid velocity fields and and so on. I think th these are just test uh, test shots and and uh, things that are tried, kind of like how the effect works works and so on. Now this is the last clip, I think. But this is a long one. We don't have to uh, watch this uh, through. 
Uh, so uh, here you can see the snow. The snow is being emitted from from the top of these trucks and uh, and it's basically following uh, the fluid uh, field, uh, which should actually have these obstacles on on these uh, different. Uh, train cars and things like that, and there you could actually see some of the particles colliding, colliding on the on the train train thing and and so on, and of course good looking ex explosions and things like that. So I, I actually kind of think that as as far as the Alien Nation project goes, it was a long project. I think the particle system in in a really really big way actually helped to save the project at least visually. It's it's so much more interesting when you when you have good looking effects and uh, and and so on. And well, while while this video is running, I can actually uh, tell some some other other things that we are basically be doing in in our next projects. I cannot talk about the projects, but I can say about some new ideas that uh, how the engine can be used. So one of the things that we exposed in a, in another project was that. Um, uh, uh, well, as I said, the uh, particles are in GPU buffers, compute buffers. So we expose those buffers to uh, uh, outside, basically. So you can use those buffers in anything. For example, if you're rendering something, you can write to that buffer from the pixel uh, uh, shader. Uh, and uh, so we have now like passes that do like uh, mesh emission, and you could do like well whatever condition that you can think of. So uh, on the surface of meshes and uh, from uh, screen space velocity buffers or, or whatever. So yeah, I think that's kind of like it for the most part. So uh, thank you. Are there any questions? I hope there are. So, anyone? B Buller? Buller? <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Over there? Okay. Right. Hi. Uh, you mentioned that the, you're basically doing uh, the particles through something to a form of, well, dynamic parallelism, as was called in um, just general, general GPTPU computing. Uh, is there any sort of performance bet, sort of like hit to that? Because I don't know. I, I just at least when I so I once played around with it in good, uh, uh, it cost a fairly significant if you did a, did a lot of it. So uh, did I understand the question right? So you're asking if there's a performance hit or gain? Hit or is performance hit? Yeah, to to doing it sort of like with uh, the sort of dynamic that shaders create more shaders. Yeah, well, the shaders don't actually create shaders. So, uh, as I said, there's like a single buffer per effect. And all of those are dependencies sorted into order. So if something spawns to another buffer, then that's run before. So they run in, in or, or order. Basically, every update is run only once. And we have code that checks that if there's no particles in buffer, then uh, those specific uh, p particles aren't updated at all because there's nothing to update. So I would actually say that it goes the other way, that it's, it's a performance gain, because you can run all of the particles in a single compute dispatch. And, and the compute dispatch basically uses I I indirect buffers so that it only runs the correct amount. So even if, if you have a buffer that could fill half a million particles, but there's only 10 particles there, it will only run the 10. Of course, running 10 particles is a little bit in inefficient, but I think people usually want more particles than less of them, so we have quite a lot of these big, big particle buffer, bu buffers and effects in the game. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else? Yeah, well, I guess I'm, we're done. Thank you.